Natural selection has led to some pretty funky adaptations, from the carnivorous nature of sundew leaves to the slippery slime released by eels. All of these adaptations exist so some small microscopic molecules of DNA have a better chance of passing from one generation to the next. The sundew, the eel, or you and I are just a vehicle to increase their chances of them doing that. We are, if you like, slaves to our own genes. This is basically basically the idea behind the selfish gene, and I personally think it's a rather captivating and humbling way of looking at the natural world. However, sometimes these genes take it even further. Sometimes using a body to enhance your survival simply won't cut the mustard. Sometimes genes have got to come up with other ways of ensuring their indestructibility. I'm talking about the extended phenotype. An extended phenotype is a functional entity that's made by an organism but isn't part of the organism itself. Beaver dams and birds nests are both great examples of extended phenotypes, but in my humble opinion, if I was to do a video on them, that would be a little bit cringy, wouldn't it, Dad? It would be uh, a little bit, ooh, a bit cliche. You know I, I mean? would say so, yeah. Yes. Well, not to worry, because I've come up with something else. So the organism which I believe is the absolute pinnacle of all things extended phenotype can be found here in this dull, unassuming looking pond. I can see you don't look particularly convinced there, do you, Dad? Really? Here in this? Um, little backwater. Oh, come on, ye have little faith. But to be honest with you, to see the creature in its true majesty, we're going to have to come back when it's dark. Now, this creature shouldn't be too difficult to find, so it's just going to be a case of wading in. Hopefully, things will start to come to life. Yep, yeah. <laughs> they are absolutely everywhere. Now, it may look like I'm just showing you some random pieces of wood debris, right? But inside one of these random pieces of wood debris, there's a living creature. I'm going to try and get one out and show one to you. It looks like a stick, but if you look closely, it's actually an amalgamation of different pieces of vegetation. There's a bit of leaf there, there's a bit of wood there. And this is the larval casing of an invertebrate called a caddis fly. Now, if you wait long enough, in fact, if I can just show Dad the cameraman there, if we wait long enough, you should be able to see something emerging from the end of that casing right now. That is a caddis fly larvae, isn't that amazing? Caddis flies are part of an order of insects called the Trichoptera. And the adults, I've got to be honest, are rather dull and unassuming, but the larvae are far from that. There's around 14,000 species of them worldwide, and almost all, if not all of them, build these incredibly elaborate cases for protection. If you look closely at all the other caddisfly larvae that I've caught, they all have slightly different casings. Some are focused more on wood to build their, build their casing, some more on leaves. There's one here, which has built its casing out of snail shells. <laughs> it really is absolutely incredible. Now, here's the thing you see. This is why I think the caddisfly is such a great example to explain the extended phenotype. These creatures never learned how to make these cases. No one ever taught them how to stick those little pieces of debris together. Those behaviours were already pre-programmed into the animal itself. The instructions were already included, if you like. You could say that these creatures are robots under the influence of their own genes. And that's interesting because that shows you that natural selection can act on behaviours. Now, obviously, if we're thinking about human behaviours, it's a little bit different because our brains are so big, it means that we can learn things, right? But if you think of the extended phenotype in the context of an animal with the brain far smaller than a pinhead, then the concept of the extended phenotype suddenly gets a little bit more real, I think. It just shows how strong the threat of predation must be in order for evolution to be steered in such remarkable directions. I'm talking about the extended phenotype. <laughs> Right, enough. Right. Make no. sure I don't suffer any dog right. shit. You just have. Right. Oh, God, you actually just. Bloody. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> anyway, right, okay, keep that in. Keep that in. That'll be good like. for the bloopers, won't it? Get out of it.